All right, so you see, pay your rent, say hi. That way people will comment cute cat and then we'll get more ad revenue for you, okay? You don't make your, your money, you don't get food, you understand? If she doesn't make rent, she does die. Chat, just so you guys know. Another way to support CC is to sub to my Twitch channel. You can sub for free with Twitch Prime and you'll pay for CC's kibble. So today, chat, we are going to test every single possible interaction with the new operator Scopos. I'm going to go through all the attackers that interact with Scopos, show how they interact with her, and if maybe some stuff counters or gets countered or whatever, we'll find out. I think the very first one is going to be one that I think I imagine most people will want to know is how Deimos interacts with Scopos. If you track Scopos and they swap between bots, does it swap between bots as well, the Deimos track, or does it end? Or can it not count or track them? I don't know. We have the two bots. I have now pinged Scopos so I can track them. We're tracking Scopos, okay. Should go to this robot. You can run. No. But you can hide. What if I swap? Oh, it stays on the other one. So I can always see where this robot is. Oh. Okay, I didn't expect that. I thought it was just going to end the tracking because it's no longer an active operator. But it stays on the inactive one. Now we're going to do the exact same thing with Jackal. I assume it's going to have the same result. In case you guys are wondering, I have a, a handheld PC, which is how I am doing two PCs at once to make this easy. Still annoying to set up, but it's easier than having someone else join me. Okay. Oh, so there's actually two set of footprints with Jackal. Wait, does it track the specific one? Okay, so if I track the old footprints... Oh, it tracks someone, and then I can... Oh, they count as two completely different operators. So this will continue to track that one. And then I assume if I track this guy and then swap. Yeah, just completely, it stays on the one. They're just treated as completely individual people, which makes sense. It's how everything else seems to be working. But I like that they each leave two different set of footprints. I would not have expected that. That's the old footprints for that one. This is the new footprints for that one. Interesting. Let's do Brava hacking next. Okay, so what we're going to test here is the hacking. First, we're going to test what happens when you cancel it. So I have three charges as Brava. I'm going to hack this. Normally, if you guys didn't know, it overheats the robot, it takes like 15 seconds, and then it blows up. But if uh, Scopos swaps, it cancels it. So it does use a charge, it starts overheating. And then, so that cancels the overheating and you still lose a charge. Now let's test how long it takes to overheat. I'm gonna do it at 2840. Okay, I didn't finish hacking until 2838. It takes eight seconds. 10 seconds if you count from the very beginning of your hack, 8 seconds from when the hack finishes and then starts overheating. And obviously you cannot hack the active one, it's basically just a normal operator. But that's the Brava interaction. We did a lot of this yesterday, but in case you didn't see it, IQ can only track the inactive robot. The active robot does not have a ping or anything, it's not like Pulse where they move around and you see something moving. It's only the inactive robot. It looks like, I guess it's just the wrist pad, the wrist phone thing they have. So if you're ever behind, below, whatever, or through a wall, you aim at the wrist pad, you're only going to hit the arm, so you might want to aim like a little bit, I guess, more there, center, up. That way you can hit the head on the robot. But it does not track the live one. But when he pulls out his phone, it does, similar to someone else playing with their phone to go on cameras. Uh, but it specifically says, hey, it is the robot. It doesn't say that it is just a phone. There you have it. IQ can't live track. Imagine if you could be IQ just running around the map and just, like, shooting them wherever they are. That'd be insane. With claymores and traps in general, this is another thing we tested with a decent amount of people yesterday. 
the inactive robot does not set off claymores. As long as they are not activated, they will not set off a claymore at all. Even if Scopos hops on that robot and is using it as a camera, it doesn't count as active. Only once they swap will it set off a claymore. The same thing goes for Nomad, um, it goes for any proximity based gadget, so even if like proximity alarm was hacked, it wouldn't set off until you swap. I wanted to try Grim. So first we'll start with a control bees, so you can see here, I set off the bees, only the active robot is getting tracked, the inactive robot is not. Now I assume if I swap between them, this one starts getting tracked. Oh, that one stays getting tracked. It doesn't go to like the three ping alibi thing until after. Interesting. Okay, so that's, it's like, I guess, Jackal and uh, Deimos. If you go from active to inactive, it con it's considered active for tracking type stuff until the track is over. And then just to prove if I set off a Grim there, it will not track the uh, Scopos until I swap onto it. Here. Also, the Grim did do 5 damage to the inactive bot, just so you guys know there. It doesn't mean anything, but just letting you know. Next, we're going to try Glaz. Does the robot show up as a thermal? Let's find out. Does the bot show up as a thermal? It does, which is illogical. It is a robot. It doesn't have thermal. That one does not. Now, what happens if I swap while I'm looking at it? Okay, swap. Alright, so the thermal just swaps as they swap. Nothing crazy there. This next one is fire. I'm not going to put it in the middle because I don't want to kill both of them, but robots are not immune to fire. Backed it out just so it wouldn't die, but it took 70-ish damage in the fire there. Robots still take damage to fire, even though, you know, big metal, indestructible, whatever, it still takes damage to fire. The next thing I want to show you guys is uh, the shield. So if you destroy the shield but don't kill the robot, the robot just stays there in this like fisticuff stance. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense why it stays there. I mean, I guess it does. They want you, the robot to be alive. If they just destroy the shield but then don't finish the robot, then you can at least swap to it and use it. But he's looking for a fight. Now, so if you destroy the shield, the robot stays alive. You can still swap back and forth between them even without a shield. However, if the shield stays up and the robot dies, both the shield and the robot are gone, which is kind of dumb. Also, you can see there, uh, for the time being, and yes, another interaction, killing the robot, even though they're not on it, counts as a kill. Currently, if people are really good, they could get a six kill ace in Siege. Hasn't happened yet, for us at least, but it can still happen. Next is going to be Fuse and how you can actually put a cluster charge on the Scopo shield. The shield, for all intents and purposes, is a deployable shield. Which means that just like a deployable shield, you can put a cluster charge on it. Now before we set it off and see what happens there, I want to see what happens when you swap robots. I assume the cluster charge gets destroyed, nothing happens. Yep, yeah, exactly what we expected. You cannot put it on the other side. Not that that really matters, but in case you were wondering. Also, okay, you can put it on the metal. It just, you can't put it too low. It has to be at least like chest height. I wonder what happens. Does it break the glass before it goes off as well? It should, yeah. Oh, it doesn't even have to do the whole drill through. It just immediately pops off. On the normal deployable shield, doesn't it have to drill through it? Okay, just for confirmation's sake, if you put a fuse charge on a deployable shield, I'm pretty sure it needs to drill through. Yeah, so for some reason it doesn't have to drill through a Scopo shield, but it does have to drill through a deployable shield. I have a few things that I want to show from attack still, but the other way around. I want to be on Scopo's. So the first thing I want to show you from Scopo's perspective is how Nook is a direct counter to Scopo's. So as you can hear... Nook is in this room, but you can't see her at all. And with the new Nook buff, where as long as she stands still or walks, she has infinite charge, a player, like Scopos, could just sit on the shield forever, waiting for someone to push, be like, wow, no one's pushing this way. I've waited like two minutes. You hop off of it, and boom, jump scare. Nook's right there. 
Uh, you can't see her at all as long as she stands still, and she can stand there infinitely. So be careful when playing Scopos, because that's one thing we were doing as well, is that we were getting a lot of people to just not know that Nook is there as soon as you swap. Nook kills you. You just stand in front of the camera. Also, this is another bug, is uh, <laughs> in kill cams, if Nook's invisible, it, she's invisible in the kill cam. It's weird. Can you put them outside? Uh, you cannot. If you go outside, I guess that's another interaction I can show you is if you are anywhere outside, it just says unable to put down shield. So if I try to swap, invalid shell spot. Even though I'm in like the open with nothing around me, you cannot swap between them in spawn. As soon as you're outside the building, it's considered inactive. Even if I like move one foot there, I'm in the same spot. You can't just can't do it outside. The next interaction I want to show you guys is a really weird one. So you know when Dokubi calls you, all you get is just a ringing in your like pocket and then you have to answer the phone or just let it ring for 12 seconds. Dokubi is actually even stronger against Scopos and I don't like it. So when Dokubi calls you a Scopos, you have this giant graphic on your screen and it won't go away until you hang up the phone. So like you actually will have your visuals blocked while Dokubi is calling you. I'm gonna get her to call again. So like you're trying to aim down sight and aim at someone and you just have this Dokubi texture and like look at how weird it is. It's like it's behind my scope even though it's like on my eyes or whatever. It's really annoying. And obviously you can't swap between gadgets while the Dokubi call is going off because you can't access your phone. So you have to hang up before you can swap. When a defender dies they drop a phone. Does the robot the inactive robot drop a phone. Actually, the real question is, does my character drop a phone? I don't even know if mine does. Uh, it does drop a phone. That's the phone right there. So if Dokubi hacks the phone from the inactive robot, she will have access to all the cameras. First thing we'll test is what happens when the inactive robot gets EMP'd. I assume I just can't swap to it. No one can be on it. Oh, and actually, in the bottom left with the little graphic, it shows a, like, EMP'd symbol. So you can't swap to it. You gotta wait for the EMP to be over, and then you can hop back on it, similar to any other camera. Makes sense. Now what happens when the robot them themselves gets EMP'd? Everyone was like, the robot's gonna shut down. No, it just messes up your screen. I'm not a huge fan of like how many visual things that they've been adding to the robots and how it's affected by other stuff, but I guess that's better than the robot just being shut down, right? We haven't tested it yet, but spoiler alert, uh, Scopos' robots are immune to Fenrir gas and uh, smoke gas. But they told us that it is not immune to concussions and flashes, so we'll just test it here. Yeah. Which, okay. I understand it's a balancing thing, but a consistency thing, it feels weird. So for all intents and purposes, Scopos is a camera. And a Ying Candela is flashing the camera for some reason, making you blind. But yet, when you hop on a normal camera, even this one... Oh. Well... We're a little far, but either way, the point still stands. The camera doesn't get flashed, so it's a little weird. Now, what I want to know is what happens if you swap between robots while Candela's going off. So even though the robot got, like, flashed, because the flashes were going all around it, because it didn't transfer until the Candela had finished, you don't get flashed. I don't think really means a whole lot, but... I guess if you time it perfectly, you can swap into a Ying Candela and not get flashed. Okay, so just for testing's sake, even though I am fairly certain we know the answer. Oh, keep thinking I just press it. Uh, no, you cannot put a Ying Candela through a shield. It's just like a normal shield. It's not penetrable by a Ying Candela. It doesn't have the fuse charge or whatever. Although it is weird that the fuse charge doesn't have to drill through, but I, I feel like that's going to get patched. But you cannot place a Yin Candela on a shield. Alright, next we have Zofia and her concussion mines. 
So they said that concussions are also supposed to affect the robots, but I believe in the trailer, when they were showing off like at, during the reveal, there wasn't any effect. So let's find out. Oh, it does affect them. So just like everyone else, you will get affected. I'm gonna put the inactive robot right in front of Zofia. The inactive robot's right in front of Zofia, and we'll see if the inactive robot sets off the concussion because it's a proximity thing. It shouldn't. It should fly all the way to me in the back. Alright, it did fly all the way to me in the back. So, inactive robot does not set off concussions. Although, wait, that somehow still concussed Zofia. I guess if it, like, exploded here, it could hit both of us. Okay, now I have the Zofia concussion launcher. If it gets activated by the inactive robot, it will not concuss me. Oh, it does get activated by the inactive robot. Interesting, because nomads don't, claymores don't, but concussions from Zofia get caught by the inactive robot. That doesn't make much sense. I don't know why Zofia is different, but... So, it should be able to see through the sense wall. Oh, it can, so it's not a bulletproof. Then why does it have this yellow tinge? Interesting. So, I thought you would be able to use this as a bulletproof to just see through smokes and then like swap to it if they have a smoke plant or whatever, but I guess it's not thermal. I thought it was because it has the exact same tinge as like a bulletproof. I guess it's not the exact same. I guess they don't even show up as thermal, so there was no reason for me to expect that, but it has this weird yellow tinge. Okay, well, not thermal. A big thing with Scopos is that one, the robots can't heal. So if you take damage, you can't get Doc to heal you, you can't get Thunderbird to heal you. You also can't take Rook armor. So there's no way to improve your health. Once it goes down, it's basically permanent. But the benefit is that since you have two robots, they each have different health pools. So if this one gets hurt, you can swap to the other one and then have full health again. But one other disadvantage that they mentioned a little bit in the reveal, which is completely unique to this uh, operator, these robots cannot get downed. Normally, if someone is to fall from this height, uh, they will get downed, but the robot will not. So we're going to get Doc to fall all the way down there. So in a normal situation, when an operator falls, they will get downed. So, Doc got downed. Uh, we have someone with him, so that's why he can be downed, and then he can also self-revive, right? However, Scopos does not have that. It's the same reason why Scopos cannot pick up armor, cannot be healed by Doc, which I'll show you guys here. I'll impact myself, down to 70 HP. If Doc tries to heal me... Everyone be very quiet so you can hear this line. It didn't say it. Okay. Well, you can't heal the robot, and sometimes when you try to heal it, you hear the wheelchair lady say, Stop trying to heal my shit. Didn't say it either time. Uh, another thing is that also the robots cannot be downed. So they can't be healed, they can't get rook armor, and they cannot be downed. As soon as they would get down, they just instantly die instead. They have no down mechanic. So a bot will never be downed, ever. Also, it makes like a weird screaming noise of just like robot noises. If you have a uh, Scopos transfer to a different shell and the like active robot is in a doorway, a double doorway, while they're transferring, you can set down a deployable shield next to it and then you have a double shield doorway. Uh, which people can still vault over, but it also creates a little slit in the middle that you can see through. Normally not the greatest, it doesn't offer a whole lot, but you now have a double shielded doorway. Obviously if this guy's ever to leave, it just becomes a one shield doorway, but you have to do it the way I showed you. So you have to start transferring and then pull out the shield on the second person and pu start putting it down right away. They will not be able to walk through this doorway, they will have to jump through, which maybe would be a, a perfect spot for a double frost mat, but I think this guy kind of blocks the way of a frost mat, so might not work as well. Uh, so the next one, so Smoke, as you guys know, is Im immune to his own canisters. Uh, Scopus is the first operator ever to also be immune. So you can throw a Smoke canister and have Scopus run through it. I will say, from Scopus's perspective, there's a lot less smoke on the screen than from Smoke's perspective. Like, on my 
tablet, like, it's just all yellow. But Scopos is barely affected by it. So I guess it's even more beneficial because since your screen doesn't get completely covered in yellow, you could just run through and kill everyone. And they won't be able to see you as well. Use the smoke Scopos combo. I'm gonna have both shields here so that if it does somehow electrify it when it shouldn't, I can swap between them. But okay, so here's the Kaid Claw. It's gonna go right next to the shield and it will not electrify it. So it's activated. It's cool or charged up, but it does not electrify the shield. And shockingly, even when you swap, it doesn't electrify the new shield. So Kaid Claw does not synergize with it. Bandit batteries won't synergize with it. It's not technically a uh, deployable shield. I know some people are asking, like, if you kill the robot and then put a bandit battery on there, will it electrify? But like, if you kill the robot, the shield goes away. So no electricity combinations. Otherwise, it'd be really cool. Like, you could put a shield with a electrified thing on a doorway and then have a like, electrified barbed wire behind it to just electrify the shit out of them. But it does not work like that. Okay, so the next interaction we're going to show you is with Tuberau. If Tubby freezes the inactive robot, you will not be able to swap to it. Similar to it being EMP'd, it is just deactivated. Uh, you can kind of see through it every once in a while. Like, you can clearly see my robot on the right side there, so... It's not completely useless, but you cannot swap to it. Also, if you walk on the freeze, uh, you will not be able to access cameras just like any other operator. It doesn't change anything. What I want to test now, though, is what happens if you are in the middle of swapping or transferring when he gets frozen. I'm going to start the transfer process. It cancels it. Okay. So unless you've completed the transfer, uh, the Tubera will cancel it. A new interaction that was added, I want to say it was just last season, or maybe it was this season, was that Oryx can now dash through OSA shields and deployable shields. Based off someone recommending it in chat, we're now going to see if Oryx can dash through this shield. Oh, he can't. That's actually surprising. I thought he would be able to. So no, you cannot Oryx dash uh, one of these. We'll try it from the other side just to be safe. Oh. So you can't Oryx dash to destroy the shield. Get past it. But we'll put the first Gopo spot on the meeting hatch itself. It does count as a valid surface to swap off of. As you can see, the robot is on the hatch. Now what happens when the hatch is destroyed? Oh god, Amy, on this is fucking ass. Okay, so it destroys the robot immediately, and it also counts as a team kill for the teammate. Or like it says you team killed. But, uh, yeah. Don't, don't put it on a hatch. I put an Aruni gate on the door. And then you let it activate. I'm now gonna swap to my other person. And I assume it just deactivates the gate. Oh, no it doesn't. Oh, okay. So, if there's an attacker, the Aruni gate's still active. Which, by the way, I don't like this change that they made. Aruni gates now don't have the bars. They just have this, like, pattern glowing on it. But So, the inactive robot does not disable the Aruni gate. So, if someone were to throw something, it would still get caught. We're also going to test if you can put cameras or stuff on here. No. Things cannot be placed on the shield. It does not work. Just to make people happy, because people keep asking about Meister cams, Goyos, whatever, you cannot put them on shields. We already tested it with bulletproof camera, but the Maestro bubble does not let you place it anywhere on here. It doesn't matter how far back you are, or what angle you're looking at, or where you try to place it, it just it doesn't work. If you get ram to ram the robot, it'll destroy the shield, the robot will stay, and then the robot will take like probably 20 damage. That's it. I don't know what you guys were expecting, but that is it. So you swap, let's see how much damage it took. 25. Yeah, that's it. So with gridlock, Tracks do do damage. I don't know why people think that the robot will be immune. I guess because metal, but the only unique interactions are with like armor and stuff or smoke and stuff. Um, you can still swap between robots even while on tracks. And then when you swap off, you do not take damage from the tracks. 
Here, I'll move more on them just to make sure. So the tracks are normal effects on the robots. People, I assume people thought that the inactive robot would die from the tracks, but the tracks are based off movement. If you just stand still and turn, you don't take damage. It's only if you move forward. Okay. Maverick. Get in here. As you can see here, if Maverick torches the shield, destroys the shield, robot stays. What we expected. And he can keep torching the robot if he wants, but... About it. Okay, so with Zero, if Zero shoots a Argus camera on the shield, he can then hop on the camera and have it pierce through. And it'll be on the other side. And it can zap the robot if he wants it to. But yep, yeah, it's just like a normal deployable shield. And then if you were to swap robots, the camera will either get destroyed or fall. It falls. So, what you guys expected. Okay, now we're going to show Nomad. Nomad. Air jabs are proximity-based. As soon as someone walks into an air jab range, it will knock them over. However, uh, for inactive robots, it does not activate. So if I set the air jab there, as you can tell, the inactive robot is not setting it off. Uh, what I'm going to test here, because I actually haven't tested this. This is, a, a, I guess, a good recommendation because I want to know. If the active robot walks into the range while the inactive robot is there, what does it do with the inactive robot? Does it get knocked? Does its shield get destroyed? Does it? Does nothing happen? I assume nothing, but we'll run into it. Okay, so it does nothing. The shield and the robot stay exactly the same. Now, if you don't run into it as the active one, and instead you swap, as soon as you swap out, just like the claymore, you will immediately get knocked over. Marines don't turn off with we'll Alibi's gadget. Okay, we got someone in chat asking something smart. Let's put down the first Scopus in the double door. Okay, so right there it's fine. Can I get closer? Oh, okay, so the Alibi just goes right through the robot. Oh, but okay, what's interesting? Like, really pay attention here when she throws it. The... Robot counts as an object that it'll bounce off of, so like you can see right there it bounced off and fell back a bit. But for all intents and purposes when deploying, it's not a solid object. So you can have an alibi basically be inside the robot and using the shield. But if you try to throw it at the robot, it bounces off of it. So you have to like prone and then throw it in there. But so alibi does go through the robot, confirmed. What happens if you switch now? I guess we could switch just to see. I assume nothing will happen. Oh, well, actually, what's interesting. Now this doesn't count as a valid shell position because the Prisma ball is in the way. Oh, wait, actually, maybe not. I don't think that affects it. Oh, interesting. So now it'll deactivate the Prisma after. That's that's weird. That should, that should not work the way it does. But so if you throw it while the robot's already down, the prisma will go up. But if you put the robot down after the prisma, the prisma goes down. So if a zombie throws a Kiba anywhere on the shield, it will not deploy. Doesn't matter if it's on the glass, if it's on a specific part of the glass, or if it's on the metal part, it does not deploy. But you cannot set up like in a zombie nest on the shield. Even on the inside, it should still not deploy. If you throw it on the robot, it just falls off and then lands on the shield. There is no way to do this. Hate to burst chat's bubble. Now let's test what Evan wanted me to test. Um, so if a teammate destroys the shield, and then you swap between robots, does the shield come back? I would assume not. We might as well test. If a defender destroys the shield, it doesn't come back. I assume that was just a bug. Evan, I think, and Cross both said that they saw that. On their early access build, they were able to pull the shield back out. Like, the shield would just respawn, but it does not do that anymore. You have to have a shield for it to be pulled out. If not, he just goes into fisticuffs mode. As you can tell, when that's a shield, you can vault over it. I guess this is the only situation where it would matter. Destroy the shield. And still, I guess, vault over the robot. But... I don't see that, how that would ever normally happen, because as soon as the shield's destroyed, they destroy the robot. But I guess, yes, you can vault over the robot for all intents and purposes. 
Not that it really changes anything, but now you guys know. But that is it for testing. We have tested absolutely everything. This took us an hour and a half. God damn. But we tested absolutely every single interaction. At least everyone that mattered. Yeah, Scopus is one of the highest interaction-based operators. The only one that would probably be higher is Brava, because Brava can hack almost everything. But no, there's definitely more operators that interact with Scopus than Brava, because ones that aren't hackable or don't have hackable stuff still interact with her. So Scopus is definitely the most interactable operator in the game.